What's up, everybody? I'm Richard. And I'm Sean. And we are speaking the language of bromance. Oh, mm-hmm. Richard, time travel. Not really time travel, but like space travel. Getting in space ships. Travel? Going around the what about, universe. What about time and space travel? Ooh, that's even better. That's like Doctor Who stuff. Yeah, it's a lady Doctor now. Who stuff. Hey, yeah. is the companion a guy or a girl? I haven't seen the new um, season. I think there's... I, I honestly, I have not seen the show yet. Not because I think it's going to be bad. I just, just one of those things that's kind of fallen through the cracks. But I think there's, I think there's a guy and a girl. Oh, that's like every dude's dream. It's like, hey, traveling through time and space with two ladies. Yeah. And they're like, hey, we're going to go hang out in the Doctor Who quarters. Can I come? No. Oh, well, I'm going to anyway by myself. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes. Richard, we've talked about this a little bit before. Way back in the day, we talked about, you know, the potential that there's this theory out there that on the other side of the sun, there is another habitable planet that we do not know about because we can't see it because we're like following each other around the sun. And you try to look in the sun and guess what, Richard? You can't see anything because the sun is bright. I know from experience. (laughs) My doctor said, don't look at it. And I did. And now my eyes hurt. Because what does he know? Yeah. Eight Ooh, years. I, went, I got a degree. Oh. Degree in what? You can get a degree in telling me what to do. <laughs> you know where I live? America. You know what that means? I'm free to look at the fucking sun if I want to. That's right. Hey, but don't. Seriously, it hurts. What do they call you, your thing, doctor? It's a practice? Yeah, it's not a profession. It's a practice because you're practicing because you suck. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I practice? Looking at the sun. <laughs> I should stop. That's why I'm in here because I can't see out of my left eye. <laughs> but Richard, we've talked about that before And fairly recently, astronomers have spotted a new object orbiting the sun That supports the Planet Nine theory Do you know what the Planet Nine theory is? Well, you explained it before or, yeah, By before, I mean you explained it in an earlier episode And you also explained it just like 30 seconds ago I'm just making right? sure you're listening What's the? What's up, everybody? I'm Richard. <laughs> but essentially, it's it's that idea that there's another planet orbiting the sun that we cannot see. Uh, I mean, this has kind of been around since like 2014, probably even earlier. But astronomers have because right now we officially have eight planets, right? Because they say Pluto, say fuck you, Pluto. You're a moon. You're not a planet. Yeah, I heard that's Neil deGrasse Tyson's fault. Is that true? That could be. He ruins everything. He's like, guess what, people? The Earth isn't flat. I'm like, what do you know? He's like, I'm a scientist. I'm like, are you? What do they call your profession? He's like, professional scientist. <laughs> what, what do they call what you do? Uh, research? <laughs> Scientific no. research? What do you- Who's it paid by? Who's, who pays for that? Uh, private donors? Aha! You're just a shill. You're a fact shill. You're a shill for people that want to know things. Yeah, next you're going to tell me climate change isn't real. Or is real. Whatever it is. I'm the opposite. Because I, I don't like you. <laughs> Ruining my, all my I'm, fun theories. I am everything that you are against. <laughs> Go up to a debate with him. He's like, listen, I have all this research. Like, yeah, but I found this blog on the internet. I That's win. That's right. Power of Google, my friend. Yeah, I got 30,000 hours of YouTube videos. You say peer-reviewed. My posts have 45 comments. <laughs> Walk up to him, throw a glass of water in his face. I'm like, yeah, see? How can you tell me I can do that, but the earth isn't throwing the water in the oceans into the atmosphere? Good day, sir. I'll be in my trailer. Start walking away. He's like, Planet Nine. I'm like, oh, got me back. (laughs) Oh, now what? Ooh, tell me more. Uh, But evidence of a still undiscovered planet called Planet Nine or Planet X by scientists. Actually, shit, I didn't realize they called this Planet X. Have you heard, like, the Planet X theory? Like, I have heard the Planet X theory. I've heard I've heard two things. I've heard one, it's where Godzilla lives ooh. because he's the king of all monsters. Oh no. That they There goes so, Tokyo. Yeah. Go, go, Godzilla. Go, go Godzilla. Ooh. Ooh. But the other thing I've heard is that um that Planet X is is a, like a, like you like you were saying, like a planet that we haven't discovered. I think it also goes by the name Nibiru. I've heard there's a so if you ever want to freak yourself out, Discovery Channel had, like, the 10 ways humanity's going to end. And one of them was this... Well, that pl- sounds lovely. Yeah, it's like, oh, God, I didn't know I had all these fears. Like It's like, it's like Yosemite exploding because it's a yeah. volcano. Super volcano. Um, there's 
Uh, hey, the planet explodes. Hey, robots. Yeah, hey, robots. Computers. computers. There was like nuclear war. There was like a zombie virus thing. It's like, great. Now I'm scared of everything. And then they had this thing, Planet X, which is a rogue planet. I don't think it was this one specifically. It was just like a rogue planet flying through space. Okay. That would like end up colliding with Earth and just like. Because I mean, if you think about it, Richard, if like a planet the size of Earth slams into Earth, I don't think good things are going to happen. No. But. Okay, is that a planet, or is that, like, just a gigantic asteroid? It said it was a planet, so the only thing I can think of is maybe, like, if the planet X is orbiting, like, the same thing we are, maybe that's mm-hmm. what they're talking about. Like, we would end up colliding because we'd catch up to each other or get in some weird, like, they might no, be going No, we'd totally fix it because we'd send Bruce Willis in space. I don't want to close my eyes. Total, yeah, I see? don't want Problem X solved. to blow up my You know what I just did, schedule? Sean? I just saved the planet. Because I got a podcast every Sunday. I just saved the planet. I don't want to miss one Oh, pod. no, wrong planet. Uh, Bruce Willis. He'd be like, oh, only for like $30 million. I'm only doing one take. It's like, God damn like, Bruce fuck. Willis. Kevin Smith's going to direct it. He's like, I'm out. Get the other one. Send Affleck. <laughs> He's like, what? I'm currently intoxicated he's kind of went off the rails have you heard those stories no yeah he's like he's like gained a bunch of weight like not good weight like fat oh, weight. oh he's gone from sad batman yeah. to fat batman he's like nobody like justice league go 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 yeah he's drinking a lot he went to rehab oh no yeah i think he heard about this planet x he's like well i gotta drink up now it's almost over. Well, and he's like, they're not sending me into space. <laughs> God damn it! I couldn't Can't pass send the- me into space if I'm fucking shit faced. <laughs> you know what happens when you're in space drunk? You're space drunk, and when you vomit, it floats around, and you're like, oh, extra alcohol gets it everywhere. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think he's doing too well, Richard. We should probably check up on him. Yeah, because I have his number. I got it right here. <laughs> anyway, he's like, even talking about. Bruce, not Bruce Willis, Ben Affleck. He's like 50. I guess he was dating like some Playboy 22 year old model. He was married to fucking Jennifer Gardner, but he fucked that up. Yeah, well, I think she's the one that dropped him off at rehab. There's a picture of her driving and she looks pissed. She looks like the kind of pissed, like when your wife comes to pick you up at a bar and you're like, oh. like the, it's like two in the morning. You're like, I, yeah. I, I wasn't going to drink. I forgot, I forgot your phone number. Have I ever told you how beautiful you are? You're the most beautiful. Sorry, I threw up my mouth. You want to do it? It wasn't you. It was it was Jim Beam. Can can you do? Can you do? Can can I do Lady Roadhead? Yeah, Does that work. She's like, how does that work? Hey, I'm... Scoot back. Scoot your seat back. Listen to me. <laughs> scoot your seat back. I'm tired. <laughs> can we get tacos? <laughs> Speaking of tacos, scoot your seat back. <laughs> I don't want to mess with my own. That's what I do. Don't want to fall asleep, <laughs> Missy you, babe. And I want to eat your taco. Eat tacos. Mm. Hey, that's, we should call Richard and see what he's doing. That's, that's slang for your. That's slang for your vajay Do you still love me? Are you mad I'm at me? So smooth. <laughs> are you? Are you mad at me? Is it? <laughs> oh, sorry, I threw up my mouth again. What's uh, this rehab? <laughs> <laughs> God damn this it, Jennifer Gardner. <laughs> Wait, you're not my wife. You're a police officer. Mm, that's entrapment. <laughs> <laughs> you can't trap me. I read the book on the laws. Listen, listen. All that taco Where talk. Where are you going? Let's change that to donuts. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's that? Is that a vibrator? Screw no. your seatbelt, officer. <laughs> Is that a vibrator? No, it's a taser. This is, oh, oh, sorry, I threw it up my mouth. It wasn't you. It was. Oh, now I'm going to throw up in your mouth. <laughs> oh. So, Planet X, Richard. Uh, it's It's been mounting for some time, right? And, but this, there's been a newly discovered object that's far out from the sun, maybe the latest piece to this growing puzzle. Oh. Which, to me, that's always interesting because it's, it's like somebody's looking through a telescope, right? And they yeah. find this thing way out wherever. And it's like, what the fuck is that? You know what? I was I like we always uh, are trying to see like when it comes to like telescopes and like looking into outer space. We're always trying to look like way, way out in outer space. You know, mm-hmm. like we're always like, you know, we're discovering stars and galaxies and uh, like clouds of dust that make stars and 
all this other stuff. But you're telling me that we haven't looked like in our backyard, essentially, our galactic backyard. Do you think it's kind of like our ocean? Like we we don't know much of what's in our ocean. Like, do yeah. we even really know a lot about our own like area? The the second to the second to the last frontier. But I mean, that's that's crazy to think. Like the science. Like we didn't we just pass like Saturn. And got like some of the best pictures ever from Saturn because of something we shipped off there like ten years ago. Well, Voyager, Voyager's Voyager one left our solar system well, like I think there's a, a more, year ago. There's a more recent one, wasn't there? Because they like uh, back, Voyager like, three. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. It's like oh, it took three years for this thing to orbit, and yeah, look, it got to Saturn. And some people yep. are like, no, it didn't, because there is no Saturn. There's only like, Uranus. <laughs> <laughs> like a butt. Yeah. But yeah, we don't really know, but this this object's official name is 2015 TG38 and it has been nicknamed the Goblin. Oh, oh what if it is a real planet? It's like, "Oh, let's go to Goblin Planet." And you go there, and there's actual goblins. How will we know? Like how like how do we have the foresight to actually have things called goblins and then we discover a planet? <sighs> what if the, oh, that's always like the weird thing like you think of like Sasquatches and all these like weird creatures that like cryptozoology see, okay. type stuff. See, see, see. Last time, I think if I remember correctly, I think the last time we talked about this, we said that's where all the Bigfoots live. No, that's where all the dinosaurs went. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You're so yeah. We we said that all the dinosaurs left because they were like, "Fuck this." Yeah. There's these dudes. There's a Bruce Willis dinosaur. Around. They figured out fire <laughs> and they're making spears. And Next, they're, they're gonna come up to us. They'd be like, "Hey." It's in your seat back. I just want to <laughs> listen. I know it's kind of weird, Velociraptor, but listen, I don't care. I'll do whatever you want. I'll do. Um, I'll. I'll. I'll suck. I'll suck on your Velociraptor boobies. Yeah, and you I, got the. You got those, right? Do you like it when I lick your claw? Mm. <laughs> hey, where are you going? I don't like it when I lick your claw. <laughs> it tastes like blood and shame. What happened? <laughs> Wait. What do you mean you're an oh. officer? That's entrapment. <laughs> uh let's see but yeah that's that i always like think like you know you see aliens and all those like cryptozoology type stuff like what if those things were smart and knew the planet was like dying before like or what if mars was habitable i've always heard like there's this theory out there or maybe it's like it's not really a theory it's just kind of a like pie in the sky thing it's like what that like uh, that like everything's underneath. No, no, no. Like, what if Mars was like a habitable planet, and like they lived there, they did a bunch of stuff, but they ruined it, and so they sent a capsule into space to Earth because Earth was a habitable planet, and when it crash landed, it was basically what killed all the dinosaurs. How do we? How do we? Uh, well, not we, not you and me personally, but how did? In that in that scenario, how did they fuck up Mars? Because the thing with Mars is Mars has very little atmosphere. I mean, same thing here. We just basically resources and stuff like that ruin the atmosphere that was there. Well, no, the problem with here is we is we're we're creating too much atmosphere. That's what the that's what the whole greenhouse effect is. Is that we're creating like a shell around the planet. In fact, when if if you talk to people that are talking about. Uh, colonizing mars they say one they say a a possible scenario for a way to colonize mars is to basically create a greenhouse effect mm. on mars to actually give mars more of an atmosphere but wouldn't it if we because basically you're creating too much an atmosphere in earth so you're going to choke everything here but once right. everything dies won't basically the atmosphere start to deteriorate and become nothing maybe it depend. i guess it would depend on vegetation and whatnot yeah i don't know neil degrasse tyson would know that's no, probably his fault probably he's he did it he ruined mars <laughs> and now he's coming here and he's gonna fuck this up too but rich actually that'd be elon musk i'm again i'm pretty sure elon musk is either a robot or like a super alien or from the future well yeah that's a good call too came back in time he's like listen yep i created ebay he came back. He came back. Uh, he came back in time. It was him and uh, the writing staff of The Simpsons, mm. and they all they all traveled to the present day from the future. What would you do if you could travel to the past? Like, what year would you travel to? When would I travel to? If I could travel into the past, hmm. You know what? I'm I'm a simple dude. Like, 
like the middle ages would be fun, but I feel like I would die. Yeah. I feel, you know, cause like life expectancy then was like what? Like 48. Yeah. Something like that. You know, and you wouldn't gain and, any extra wealth. You'd show up on like a, a land where there's a king and you're like, I have come from the future. And they'll be like, which, yeah. which, yep. Yep. And then you'll and then drink, I get run out of town. Yeah. And you'll drink their beer, their, their mead. It'll be super strong. You're like, Oh God, listen, listen. Hey, <laughs> sit back on that horse. Sit back on that throne. <laughs> mm. hey, that's a trap, man. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth. Wait, you're a knight. That's a trap, man. <laughs> But yeah, uh, no, I would pro honestly, if it was me, I'd probably hit like, I want to say like 1950s. Really? I think I would do 98. Yeah. Why 98? Because that's like at the cusp of like when the internet was big. I mean, I guess would be 30 and 98 be okay. Why not just, why not just go back to like 95? Uh, I mean, I think 98 kind of got you into the 2000s. Like the internet was getting bigger. Yeah, but then you can make all your smart investment choices. You could do that in 98, I think. I don't think like Google and all that stuff was real big yet. Like, I guarantee Google was, Apple was Apple was starting to tank. Yeah. So you could have totally you could have totally gotten in there. But see, like in the 60s, number one, or the 50s, like number one, you get to like hang out with like fucking you get to like you could like go to Vegas and fucking do like a bunch of like all the cool Vegas shit because that's when Vegas was run by the mob. Yeah, but are you and gonna get to all... do that cool stuff? Like, what are you gonna do for money? Um, bet on horse races. Yeah, like I'd if. show, I'd show, <laughs> I'd show up with my sports almanac. I want to put and... ninety on the Yankees. Like, well, everybody is, and this this is fake money. It says from two thousand eight. Damn it! That's the other thing. You could probably find cash that was like ninety eight two thousand range. Mm. Go back, point. drop some cabbage on Apple, Google. Yeah, see, that would happen when I get older. Yeah, but you're, if you go now in the 50s, by the time that gets here, you're going to be like 78, 80. Well, do I get to jump Do I get to jump around? No, or do I, I, just, I was saying that you just get to go to one this point This is one time. trip. Yeah. This is one trip. I don't know, man. The 60s would be fun. Because I feel, here's, here's why I think the 60s would be fun, or the 50s, 60s would be fun, is because I feel like you could be a much you have a much better chance of being kind of a nomad you can like wander around yeah, and like true. you know pick up odd jobs and shit like that i guess 98 and have more yeah. of a wandering lifestyle i guess if you went 98 and you showed up it's like all right what's your social security number you're like shoot um this like Five? wait is do you guys still have those you're 12 like what do you, you you're trying to steal some kid's identity then you end up in jail yeah see that's what would happen if you traveled to like 98 see if i travel in the 50s Cause this is the era where like dudes were like have this is where this is the era where a guy was like raising a family and then like twenty miles in the like in the town over he has a completely different family and a whole different life. Yeah, which seems kind of like a bad idea. Like, why would you want to raise two families? I know, right? That's a lot of but work. You know what? You could you could do it on like one salary. Yeah. So fucking. So I got three houses and twenty seven kids. Yeah. What do you do? I sell insurance. Yeah. <laughs> I sell ad spaces for cigarettes. And I smack the dames on their butt. Like, yeah. There you go, sweet say, cheeks. Hey, dame. Hey, sweet cheeks. You look like a hot little pistol. You want to be my fourth wife? <laughs> Did you say fourth? Yeah, I think. Uh, I don't know. Here's the picture. I say fourth. I meant four. Yeah, it's fourth. <laughs> um, but no, I feel like if, if I feel like you had a better chance of being kind of, you could be a a drifter and it not be so I, I feel like you could do it a lot easier especially in the 60s because you had hippies and shit running around all over That's the true. fucking country would you try to like join a hippie commune oh shit Richie you gotta be careful listen no now I'm scared you go back in time <laughs> and you're like you join a hippie commune like oh my god this is great and like somehow you communicate to me like you're writing me letters this is what happened Richard so you're writing me letters like every day. Oh my god! This is, you know, don't tell me I'm gonna leave them in a mailbox and then you're gonna pick them up out of the mail. This is a fucking Keanu Reeves movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good point. P.S. I love you. P.S. No, that was a whole different movie. P.S. Bro, you, bromance you. <laughs> I bro you. Anyway, it was called, like the lake house, the lake house. That was the name of it. I remember. Yeah, it was kind of creepy because she like he was like eight back in time, something like that. She's like, hey, you know what's actually creepier? The Time Traveler's Wife. You ever watch that movie? That's fucked up. Because he goes back in time when she's like seven and like walks up to her alone in the field. He's like, hey, we love each other and I'm going to be your husband. She's like, okay. Hey, in Futurama, Fry 
basically gives birth to himself. Well, he gives birth to his... Oh, isn't he like his own grandpa or something? Yeah, he's his own grandpa. Oh, that's icky. That'd be weird. Can you imagine? Uh, anyway, so you're writing me letters, and you're like, oh, so I'm, I'm in the 60s, Sean. This is amazing. I went to Vegas. I lost some money, but... You know, I think I'm going to figure it out. And the next one's like, hey, I moved to California. I met up with this dude who's a singer-songwriter. He's really cool. It's awesome. He's got a lot of friends he's going to let me meet. So I'm going to check him out later, all right? Keep keep potting, man. Next one's going to be like, hey, Sean, this guy's really cool. His first name's kind of a girl's name, Marilyn. <laughs> or no, it's Charles. His last name's kind of an odd name. But I don't. it seems like it's like on the tip of my tongue. He's a good singer. Yeah, good singer. Hangs out with Brian Wilson. Yeah. He's a beach boy. So he's got to be cool, right? Next week, I'm like, oh, God, Sean, I fucked up. I made a mistake. I'm in the Charles Manson cult. Tell, tell me he dies. <laughs> and then, Richard, your picture shows up next to Charles Manson for the rest of my life. Yep. And then I go to prison. Mm-hmm. Doesn't end well, Richard. Doesn't end well. It worked out for the guy in Shawshank, right? Which one? I don't think oh, they God. either won, yeah. Because sometimes he won. Sometimes he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, have you ever heard of the planet Uranus? <laughs> hey, just lean back in that chair a little bit. <laughs> Wait, you're not a guard. This is entrapment. <laughs> uh, but no, so the, the 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 shuttle that they ship from Mars, the idea is that that's what crashed. That's what killed all the dinosaurs. And in that ship, Richard, was Adam and Eve. Oh. So you're telling me there's a ship that big enough to crash into the planet and kill all the dinosaurs, and there's two people on the whole fucking ship? I didn't say it was a great theory. Just a theory. Not even a theory. A big-ass ship. It's just a pie-in-the-sky kind of weird idea. Big-ass ship, and there's only fucking two people on it? Well, I mean, it was one... What happened to all the people that built the ship? But, I mean, Richard, it was you. Know, it was Pangea at that time. We hadn't really separated yet. Maybe that's what caused Pangea to break apart. <laughs> but I'm saying, like... A whole big giant ship, and there's only two people on it that show up, and they're like, hey, this looks like a nice place to fuck. Well, I mean, Richard, I mean, in Superman, they sent one kid in one capsule. I think they could have sent more. To a populated planet. Hmm. Touche. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the goblin, Richard, uh, is nicknamed the goblin because that's just way cooler is the way this article explains it. Uh, it's a member of a group called Extreme Trans-Neptune Objects, which means that it orbits... Uh, let's see that that its orbit sees its traveled an incredible distance from our star, and that orbit might actually be the result of the goblins goblins interaction with a planet that has yet to be found. So this isn't even the planet that they think; it's just some object that they see floating that oh. interacts in a way like there's a gravitational pull of some sort. Right? Like, uh, well, because like, okay, for like, like you know that. Like uh, when you were a kid and you made like a model of the solar system and you drew all those perfect circles and that's what oh yeah, yeah. you put the planets on and everything like that's not exactly the way our planet orbits yeah. the sun it's more it's we orbit in more of like an elliptical like an ellipse yeah we orbit the sun um but so 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 what you're saying is that they're seeing this object that has like a skewed orbit. And they're theorizing that it might be because of another object, a bigger has, object, yeah, that has that has skewed its uh, that skewed its orbit, kind of like um, kind of like a moon, yeah, yeah, a moon or a satellite. Oh, what if they have? Oh God, what if they have satellite over there? Oh, it's a goblin satellite. Yeah, they're like okay, guys, it's Super Bowl Sunday. Let's steal from the Earthlings, those dumb sons of bitches. That's what it's for. You know what? It's the equivalent of of throwing installing something on the power line. <laughs> That's why our satellite's so expensive, because they know somebody else is jacking into their system and stealing all their stuff. Is that why my internet's so slow? Probably. Some some goblins downloading cop porn. It's also because I live in America. Well, I mean, we're so S spread out. Stupid America internet. I mean, if we all live, like, in one spot, then we'd just be clustered. And you live in the belly button of a state, which is not good. It is a belly button, isn't mm -hmm. it? Oh, my God, I never thought yep, of that. That's the way I explain it. Everybody's like, oh, that sounds horrible. I'm like, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so when the goblin was spotted, it was extremely far off from the sun, uh, as well as twice the distance from the star as Pluto. And its orbit is stretching in an oblong shape that takes it up to 23,000 times as far from the sun as Earth. Pluto, meanwhile, is around 34 times as far from the sun as Earth. So the goblin really, really gets out there. So this is a lot further away than like what we talked about. 
I think whenever we talked about the the Planet Nine idea, is it was kind of like following us around the sun. Like it was mm-hmm. like basically Earth two kind of thing. Oh, so you, so you're yeah. Like originally the thought is that like this this planet is a complete opposite end of our orbit at any given moment. Yeah, which is why we can't find it is because it's on the other side of the sun. But this is kind of the same thing as it's far out there enough that the sun kind of blocks it. But it's it's like near it's like past Pluto and maybe even further. So this really isn't like. This is like a pla- a new planet, not even really a planet like nine in mm. our solar system. I guess I'm not sure how far out our solar system technically. What goes. do you think happens if we if we shoot a satellite straight up? I always wondered this because space is three dimensional. Is it, Richard? Is yeah, it, it is. I th- I think it is. I don't know. I don't know. I've never I've never gotten an answer to this question. Like, what if we just because we always shoot satellites like out towards other planets, which I assume are like, obviously we're not like in a direct line with other planets, but like, you know, like, like we're in one spot and then another planet is in, is in a different spot. Yeah. That's a good that's, point. Like I always think of our planets as being like on the same plane, but some yeah. planets could be higher. Some could be lower. That's a good but point. Like, what if, what if we just took a satellite and just, Shot it like directly, it's like just up and just kept going up, like away from the sun. I don't know, not even away from the sun, just up. You broke my brain on that. I don't know. That's like <laughs> makes me feel more like the flat earth theory is probably real. <laughs> I don't know, it's weird to think about because I honestly never really thought about like the, the planets being on like different levels. Like Mars could be you know hundreds of thousands of miles higher than us, right? Is it though? I don't know. I feel like that's. I'm not an should, astronomer. I feel like Neil. This is entrapment. I feel like it is. I feel like we've been <laughs> sold a bag of lies, Richard. Maybe we have, but I'm saying that space, like we exist in a, th- we, we exist in three dimensional space. Yeah, there's stuff up, down, left, yeah. right. So what? What if? What if we shot one straight down? What if we stood in Antarctica and just shot one, shot a satellite, like launched a satellite directly into the air? Do you think it's which even would possible? essentially like so if the planet's here and then the satellite the, the, like the, like imagine a planet like hold a ball in your hand and then just point and arrow straight down and that's where we that's where the satellite would come out. Do you think the gravitational pull of the sun would mess that up though? Maybe that's what it is. Where's the sun behind us? Is it? Yeah, because it's dark or is out. it below us or is it above us behind well, us? Well, actually, Richard, or is it in front of us? So the sun above us rotates us because we live on a flat plane. God damn Surrounded it. by an ice wall. Would you knock it off <laughs> this fucking flat Earth bullshit? <laughs> God, I wish Neil deGrasse Tyson would like give like finally shut these people up. It's never gonna happen. No, it's not. Because people. <sighs> the problem is, you listen to it too long. You're like, hmm. I don't have the answers. Neil deGrasse Tyson does, and he seems to be smart. No, that's the problem is is that you listen to it long enough, and then you go, nope, still stupid. <laughs> I think it's just because you're not a dreamer. I'm a dreamer. Like if I love for, like flat Earth to be real, and for them to be yeah, like, but I'm telling you that you could shoot a satellite straight up or down, and then that fucking broke your brain. Yeah. So who's the real dreamer? I'm dreaming inside three dimensional space. Well, I'm dreaming of a flat Earth. Okay, you know what? Let's go with your let's go with your crazy, weird, stupid, fucking flat Earth theory. Why can't I shoot a satellite straight up into the air? Well, maybe that's what we all we've been doing. No, I mean just just have it keep going up. Maybe that maybe all those other planets that they say they visit are above us. And also, if that's the case, then why is it? Wouldn't wouldn't my satellite cover like if I like if, wouldn't my satellite television like cut out for like six months out of the year? Um. I don't know, Richard. I'm not a scientist, but I play one on this podcast. <laughs> well, I think because well, I think the idea behind that, like if, it, if the satellite would just be floating up there and, and it would just be spinning around us, kind of thing. Well, that's dumb. I hate this theory. I wish it would go away. <laughs> I thought it went away. It did go away. It, it did went for a away. Bit. It's come back. It like did four hundred years ago, and now all of a sudden, people are like, "Wait a minute!" And I'm like, "No, no." <laughs> I think I wonder if it's just because I don't know. I don't know. I don't believe it, but I'm more of like if they were to come out tomorrow. And I'm the same person. If like so they came out tomorrow, and be like, hey, guess what? Lizard people, they're real. I'd be like, 
All right. Was it ruin my day today? No. Okay. <laughs> Lizard people rule everybody. And same thing with this. Like, hey, guess what? Flat Earth is it's actually flat. Ice wall and everything. I'm like, does that mess up my day today? No. All right. Sweet. Is there still space? Yeah. Technically. Okay. Keep searching it. <laughs> is it three dimensional? Can I shoot things straight up and down? I don't. I think with flat Earth, the idea would be that you can't go down. You could only go up. So it's kind of like marriage. <laughs> Hey, babe, just lean, lean your spaceship back. <laughs> so objects like the goblin are special to astronomers because their behavior isn't thought to be influenced by larger bodies in the inner solar system, like J- Jupiter, Neptune, and the like. So the bigger planets, I guess, kind of have some kind of pull on these. But if they're not being tugged on by planets, then uh, they're having a rough just, night. But, yeah. Hey, Uranus, why don't hey. you tug on this? Hey, yeah. Neptune, lean back a little bit. Let some of those yeah, gases out. I mean, you'll see back Neptune. I'm going to find Europa. Wait a minute. You're, this is Uranus. This is entrapment. Uh, let's see. So gassy. That leaves the door open for interactions with objects we haven't yet discovered, like Planet Nine. When studying the orbit of the goblin, the researchers discover that it appears to be acted upon by an unseen object in the same area as others, which have offered hints to the existence of a hidden planet. So when Pluto was a planet, was this the, called the Planet 10 theory? Uh, I would assume so, yeah. I still don't understand why we don't make Pluto a planet Oh again. my god, is that why it's called Planet X? Because X is the Roman numeral for 10? Oh, actually, probably. I bet it was. And we had nine planets at and one then, point? Yeah, and then we were like, well, we fucking conquered the Romans, so fuck that writing. It's Planet X. Guess what? It's not Planet 10. Pluto. Because guess what? Rome burned to the ground. Yeah, we lost all the Nero our flat earth and the f- details. And the fiddle. Fuck that guy. Fucking Caesar. Yeah. Man, that's sad. Like, that's that's the one thing. Like, maybe that's where we should go back in time and save all those writings. The Library of Alexandria. Yeah, it got burned down. Everything's gone. To the ground. Everybody's like, how do we do math? Like, I don't know. We don't have the worksheets. We don't have the answer key. <laughs> <laughs> we lost the we lost the teacher's edition. <laughs> Uh, let's see. So without seeing the planet itself, scientists can only go by what they see other objects doing as it orbits. And several previous examples have shown that something large appears to be influencing the movement of objects far past Neptune. So these distant objects are like breadcrumbs leading us to Planet X. Scott Shepard of Carnegie, one of the authors of the new study published in the Astronomical Journal, said in a statement, he said, the more of them we can find, the better we can understand the outer solar system and the possible planet that we think is shaping their orbits a discovery that would redefine our knowledge of the solar system's evolution so are we saying that this planet is in terms of distance from the sun are we saying that this planet is similar to that no this was like thirty six thousand times or 3600 times away from the sun as we are but pluto is 36 times the distance from the sun as we are so this, so this they're saying this plan is way the fuck out yeah. there. Yeah. Like past Kuiper past the Kuiper belt and everything. Yeah, yeah, it's way way out there. So it's going to be super cold. See, I was thinking, see before when we were talking about a planet that was like on the opposite end of our orbital path, then I was like, well that puts it in the quote unquote the Goldilocks zone. That's what they call it. Planets that are planets that are uh close to the sun in term in relative there's like in a similar distance to ours they call the gold the goldilocks zone not too hot not too cold not too hot not too cold yeah so i i, I kind of like the idea more of like the planet following us because that would give like a habitable planet within reach you know it's right. just like you kind of jump out of planet earth and you just sit there and wait for it to come to you yeah and then we find a bunch of dinosaurs yeah it's all fun and games until we show up on Dino World. Oh, but what happens? Like you show up, like, oh, well, welcome to Planet X. I'm a uh, Bob the T Rex. Like, don't <laughs> don't worry. Our repetition, you know, s- precedes us. I know. I remember. Ah, right. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're totally over that. We so- now we do science. Yeah, we don't actually even eat meat. Like we're past that. Like we have. Yeah. Speaking of science, what happened to your plan? We're like, well, some people still believe it's flat. Well, that's fucking stupid. They're not allowed here. <laughs> and I'm a T Rex. <laughs> Okay, oh shit, I lost my pin. Damn it. Um, <laughs> could you pick that up for me, please? The whole planet is just covered with drop pads. 
<laughs> None of us can pick them up. Wait. Pens are the most valuable resource. <laughs> you show up just with like a box of pins. For some reason, that's what you packed. Like you didn't. And then know. you made. And then you're made king. <laughs> you just pick them up, king of all the T Rexes. Yeah. But it's we like, why is he the ruler? He doesn't have fucking big, giant, sharp teeth. He's the only one that can pick up pens. And we stopped eating meat, Greg, you dumb son of a bitch. Yeah, we went vegan. We've got genetically Healthier. modified protein. We're trying, to, we're trying to live, Greg. We're trying to live our life, and we're trying to live it well. I've heard that, like, we talk about, like, what will people think, like, you know, 100 years from now, like, what was the barbaricness of this generation? And I think I've heard this, and I kind of believe it, that at some point we're going to figure out how to make um, proteins that taste just as good as the proteins we eat today. Uh, we do that now. Have you had Beyond Burger? I've had I've had some stuff, but the problem is it's expensive. It is expensive, but oh my God, Sean, this Beyond Burger is fucking like amazing. Yeah, I and uh, like this is coming from somebody that cooks food. Like I cook yeah. a lot of food, and this fucking Beyond Burger like totally fucking blew my mind because number one it looks exactly like a burger mm-hmm. and not just not i'm not saying that it looks like a burger like in terms of shape or whatever like i mean you cut it like you could take a beyond burger you cut it in half it's like red and juicy on the inside and it looks exactly like a fucking hamburger Does it drip like actual blood well it it yes and well it looks like blood but it's not what they do is they inject uh, beet juice hmm. inside of it so it looks like a fucking like red juicy burger so it fucks with your head it's, it does Have they, the uh, whole thing's a mind fuck but it's so fuck it's actually good if, like you eat it and you're like this it tastes exactly like a fucking hamburger if they can master like steaks and chicken and pork and stuff like that yeah and if we and that and that's why i said like 100 years from now they're like we're gonna figure that out where that's gonna be easy and accessible and cheap that people are gonna be like, why the fuck were we eating all these cows and animals and stuff? Like that's like I like I felt like I was cheating on beef when I ate this burger. I felt like I was having an affair. Like the next time I looked at, the next time I had a hamburger, I felt shame. Yeah, I felt shameful. I felt like I did something bad because you should have just ate a Beyond Burger. No, like, like I felt bad for the burger. Like I can't. It's like it's like it's like it's the equivalent of like coming home. And washing your dick in the sink and trying to rub glitter off of your genitals. I only happen, had that happen twice. Mm. How'd you feel? Um, okay. Once I got the shot, I mean, yeah, that was the problem. Peeing hurt for a bit, right? But I mean, like it does. You know, God bless Greg. He was he was an amazing man. It's the only love I've ever known. Yep. It was weird because I was in the club and I'm like, hey. Lean back. Like, wait, that's not a taco. That's a weenie. Oh. Well, when in Rome, right? <laughs> He's like, hey, by the way, I'm a cop. I'm like, that's entrapment. Oh. <laughs> uh, Actually, you probably said, oh, 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 oh. But yeah, Richard, that's that's kind of the tale of, of Planet X. Planet it's 9. It's not bad. It's interesting. So, so they're saying, so it's basically, so it's a planet that exists beyond our solar system, beyond our known solar system. Yeah, and I think the thing that creeps me out right now, like you talked about like the three-dimensional space we live in. Space freaks me out when I sit and think about it because you start like... Oh my God, doesn't it? Because like you start, it's like, okay, well, there's stars or stuff. You start like saying, oh shit, like it takes years to get, oh my, like what happens if a planet runs into ours and we all explode and die? Like what happens if like the sun just like says, fuck you earth and throws us? Yeah. See, and like, okay, going back to Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh, he had that show on, I, I know I've said this before, he had that show on Netflix called The Cosmos, mm. and the very first episode he talks about our galactic address, and like, th- we're on Earth, and Earth is in our solar system, and our solar system is part of uh, this galactic n- neighborhood, and then that neighborhood and we like like everything is like a fraction of a thing. Yeah. You know, like our planet is a fraction of our solar system. Our solar system is a fraction of our galactic neighborhood, like a small fraction. Mm-hmm. And that and that galactic neighborhood is an even smaller uh, you know, fraction of our of a of a cluster. And that cluster is a small fraction of a galaxy that is a small fraction of our 
visible universe, which is oh my god, it's like a grain. It just of, keeps going and going. What's well, like if you compare it like grains of sand? Like it's not even a grain of sand, right? Yeah, yeah. Like think of our planet as a grain of sand on the beach, mm, buried deep, deep underneath. Of uh, like our planet compared to the universe. Like go to a beach. God, what are we doing, Richard? Our lives are insignificant. In fact, Don't I matter. heard once that there are more stars in our observable universe than there are grains of sand on Earth. I thought I heard the opposite of that, but I could be wrong. And each star might possibly host an array of planets. Do you think any of those other planets have podcasts, Richard? I hope not. I don't wish them this kind of pain. <laughs> uh, but Richard, that's that's kind of the the planet. You know, maybe if they don't have podcasts, we could be the first one there. We could spread the <gasps> podcast. We'd be like the we Christopher could. Columbus, but instead of blankets, Richard, we spread podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> it's same effect. <laughs> Richard, do you have any Richard's closing thoughts here on our Planet um, Nine, Planet X episode? The universe. It's a great big universe, and we're all really puny. We're just tiny little specks about the size of Mickey Rooney. No, I don't think it's sad. I used to think it was sad. Like, I used to, like, think about it and feel sad. But honestly, like, it makes me feel... Some people think about, Some people think that big, and then they feel so insignificant that it's depressing. I look at it, and I'm like, you know what? Like, the anything that I do, good or bad, I feel has very little impact on the universe, and so I shouldn't worry so much. Yeah, I think it's a good point, too. Like, you kind of, like, just... Being born is like kind of winning the lottery in its own right, because the odds yeah. of being born is extremely small. So the odds of being born on this planet, I guess, and yeah. meeting your friends. And, and if you were born on planet 10 or planet 9. You'd be a T-Rex. You'd be a T-Rex and probably cold. Yeah, trying to find pins. All right, Richard, let me do a little bit of housekeeping. Visit our website, we're at languagebrones.com. Visit us on Twitter, on Instagram, at languagebro. Email us at eatthebeaver at languagebrones.com. Make sure to check us out live in Chicago at the Beat Kitchen on November 27th. You'll get to see the podcast, What About Chicago? And Richard and I do a live show for the Language Bromance. Tickets are available Woo! at thebeatkitchen.com. Beat it's in the show notes. Also, you can like us on Facebook and make sure to show some people this podcast and get it uh, then recruited to join the LB Army by getting them to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. And when you're doing that, you throw a rating and review on there. Do that, and I'll tell you why. Because those actually help. I know you don't think they help, but they do help. Because in terms of things like search algorithms and a bunch of other technical shit that I have no idea how it works, but Sean tells me how it works, so let's go with it. They actually help keep us relevant in search engines and make sure to check out all the other great shows on the pod bros network, which we are proudly a part of. Yeah. It's the planet nine of podcasts. Yeah. And if you want to go just a tiny bit further, join our LB army, like LB army member, Alexandra, by going to our Patreon account. It's www.patreon.com slash language of bromance. And if you're like, listen, I'm, I'm tied on cash. It's Christmas time. Guess what? We have a brand new Amazon link in our show notes where it doesn't cost you anything extra. Just click the link. Do your shopping, like your Christmas shopping that may be coming up, or your shopping for your trip to Planet X, and we just get a little bit of a kickback on it. It'd be awesome. Do all of those things. Or don't. All right. Or it's fine. Yeah, you've made it this far, so that's all it really matters. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Was well, there anything else before I close her out? Nope. Nope. All right. Nope. I, I'm going to go think about my place in the universe. All right. Well, that's all the bronze here for this show. I'm Sean. And I'm Richard. And I say we eat. Listen, just back up a little bit. Just push it back so we can eat the beaver. Wait a second. Wait, this is an actual beaver. That's entrapment. <laughs>